Revelation chapter 3, if you would. As we take the slow route, down route 66. Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. He mentioned something here. And um, I, I want you, as we go through this, I want you to... Um, I want you to pay attention to the Word of God, and I want you to pray for the message. God uh, has been laying a, a series of messages. I knew it wasn't going to be one sermon. And um, I, th I thought maybe I could just wait, excuse me, until I was done with the Ten Commandments series, but I, I just don't, I don't think it... I don't think it's right to wait. I think God's telling me, go ahead and, and do it now. And I'm calling it, this is your life. And um, I'm, I'm not sure if I had anything like this explained to me when I was young. I'm not going to say that I did have. I'm not going to say that I didn't have and then blame you know, people for not preaching or teaching me this. But had I, had I known then as a young person what I know now, not just from what's happened in my life, but from the scriptures, uh, I think it would have greatly helped me. But it, it has helped me in that God has let me see it as I've gone through life, he's allowed me to see my life in the scriptures. Um, and I'll just give you a little hint. Um, every one of us starts out in Egypt. Every one of us does. Now, you're either going to be an Israelite set free from Egypt or you're an Egyptian. And you ain't going nowhere. Which means you're lost, you're staying lost, and nothing's going to change that. You're an Egyptian, you're going to die and go to hell, that's it. Or you could be an Israelite that God wants to take you out of Egypt. But I want you to understand that God did not lead Israel out of Egypt one day and immediately set them in the promised land the next day. It did not happen that way. It, did, it wasn't even close. They had trials. They had temptations. And they were all performed by God to see who was worthy to enter into Canaan land. Now, I'm going to explain that during the message this morning. And uh, what I want you to do is, I don't know if I should say this or not. I don't want to offend anybody. But I just want to say, I want you to forget about John Calvin and Jacob Arminius. I want you to forget about both of those guys. I want you to forget about what their doctrine is. I want you to focus on the scriptures and I want you to focus on how much of what I'm going to preach this morning matches your life. Because I have a feeling that it's going to hit you at various places in your life. You're going to see it there. Because we've left Egypt. We are not in Canaan yet. We're not there yet. Some of us may have a long way to go. Some of us may not. But we're not in Canaan yet. And I want you to think of the one big thing. How many people left Egypt and out of that number, how many actually made it into Canaan land? I want you to think about that. All right. Right now, Revelation chapter three. And this does has, have a little bit to do with it. Revelation 310. 
Uh, this is to who? The church at Philadelphia. Revelation 3.10, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Listen to what he said. Because you have kept the word of my patience. I've talked about this. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. You keep the word. You hold on to this book. You don't let go of this King James authorized Bible. You don't let it go for anything. You don't alter it. You don't retranslate it. You don't rewrite it. You don't change it. You let it change you. Somebody say amen. And I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Then he said in verse 11, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast. There again, twice now in two verses. In verse 10, he said, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will keep you from the hour of temptation. And here in verse 11, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast. Now, fast does not mean speedy, Gonzalez. It does not mean at 100 miles an hour. Hold it fast. The word fast means like driving a nail and holding something, holding drywall or paneling or two boards together. It means fastening them together so that they do not come apart. Okay? Hold that fast which thou hast. Make sure that what you've got, there ain't a man in the world there ain't a woman in the world. There ain't a church, a cult, nothing in this world. And there isn't a devil in this world that can take that away from you. You hold on to it, fasten it to your soul, and you, and you pray every day. God, don't ever let me let go of this Bible. Don't ever let me exchange the word of God for something else. God, there is nothing else. Peter, when it came down to it and all the mistakes that Peter made and all the weaknesses and the things that he was, when Jesus looked at him and the other disciples in John 6 and said, Wilt thou also leave? Peter said, To whom shall we go? You have the words of everlasting life. Peter said, I'm clinging to that. And that's what got Peter through after Christ was crucified and he watched him die. That's what got Peter through to resurrection day. Was in the back of his mind, he kept hearing. He said he was going to be crucified and on the third day he was going to rise again. That's what got Peter through those 40 days when Peter said, I go a fishing. He was about ready to give up and yet here's Jesus walking on the water toward him. That's what got Peter through to wait until the day of Pentecost and the Holy Ghost came down. And who gets to preach the very first sermon of the Holy Ghost age? It was the Apostle Peter. And why? Because he said, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life and he would not let them go he held them fast hold that fast which thou hast jr jaden you're the two youngest people in this room and and uh, audrey back there if i could tell you anything if i if if I were to just show up in your life and say, Jr., I'm from the future. And I come from 40 years in the future and I know you 40 years in the future. Would you like for me to tell you things that are going to happen to you between now and then? What would you say? You'd say no? I would probably say to you, but JR, I'm going to save your life. And I want you to listen to what I'm going to say to you. I have to say it. Okay? So, in a way, it's already like that. 
I'm from, let's see, you're 18. So I'm 55. I don't know what the math is, but I'm 30, 40 some odd years from your future. I've been down the road that you're headed down. All these adult guys have already been down this road. And we would, all of us, we would come to you and we would say the exact same thing to you and to Jaden. We would say, listen to us. Let us tell you what you're going to face in the next five years, in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years, in the next 40 years. Let us tell you how you can avoid all of this. Let us tell you how this is all going to work out. We'll tell you simply that if you'll hold on to the words of this book and don't ever let it go, God will spare your life. He'll spare your soul. And God will get you through everything that's going to happen to you in the next 40 years. Guys, would that be worth telling this young man? and Jaden, and Audrey back there. So that's what we're going to do, okay? That's what we're here for. We're here to tell these young people what, what they have coming down the road of their life. See, the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go. And if you think about the word training, training does not involve just yelling at them. Training involves understanding that the first time they do something, they are going to make a mistake in it. If you were, if you were in the military, Ron, the first time they put a gun in your hand and tried to teach you what to do with it, did you do so good the first time it happened? No. Did they kick you out right then? They were patient. We've got eight weeks to turn this boy into the kind of man that we can use to send on to do other things. And it worked, didn't it? You made it through the eight weeks. Was it eight weeks? Twelve weeks. Of, oh, you took twelve. Usually takes most guys eight. Ah. Took twelve weeks. But everything they wanted to teach you in 12 weeks, you picked up on. You learned it, didn't you? Most of it. That's being honest. Okay? And that's how we're supposed to do these young people. We're supposed to train them. We're not supposed to take new recruits into the Marine Corps and act like there are no enemies. So really, there's no reason to train you to shoot anybody. There are enemies. And you're the guys that are going to have to kill them if we tell you to kill them. Okay? And there are enemies in life coming down the road for each one of us. And we're going to have to be ready to meet them and hang on to this so that God will bring us through it. Let me explain it. Hold, hold thou fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown. Let me read you some verses. You can turn here if you want. I'll read them. Job 27, 6. My righteousness, I hold fast. That means that you have decided to live a system of morality that says, I'm not going to run around on my wife. I'm not going to give my life over to drink. I'm not going to turn my life over to drugs. I'm not going to, I'm not going to beat my wife, beat my children. I'm going to live a certain lifestyle as best as I can and hold on to that fast because that's what I believe is right. And will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. In other words, when you get to the end of your life, your consciousness is pretty, your conscience is pretty clear that you did for the most part the right thing. First Corinthians 16, 13, watch ye stand fast 
in the faith. There it again is. Stand fast. In other words, God, nail my shoes to the floor that I move not away from my faith in this book and what it says. I'm going to believe it and I'm going to do it to the very end. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit, which means to free, to liberate, to clear, to discharge you like men. Be strong. Let all your things be done with charity. Men, there's nothing wrong with being a man's man. But having charity and love for others and their weaknesses. You can say, well, if they just grew up being a man, they wouldn't have those problems. Maybe in that area of life, they have absolutely no power against it. We that are strong, Paul says in Galatians, ought to help the infirmities of the weak. That's what being a godly man does. Is there not a code in the military that if your brother gets wounded in battle, that you don't bayonet him and kill him off? That what do you do? You grab him and pull him out of harm's way in order to try to save his life. Is there not that code? Is there not that honor? Should there not be that same code and honor amongst us? That when one of us gets wounded and falls, we don't bayonet him and say, Ah, we don't have to worry about them anymore. We help them. We lift them up. We get them out of harm's way. And then we let God heal them and God cure them. Um, watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Quit ye like men. Um, be strong. Let all your things be done with charity. Galatians 5. This is my, I love this. One of my favorites. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. He means stand fast. That means again, nail your shoes down to the floor. I'm not moving. I'm not taking a step away. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to go, watch this now. I'm not going to go from the King James to the new King James. What did I just do? I moved, didn't I? The next step is English Standard Version. The next step is no Bible at all. That's the next step. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You've already been in that. You don't want it. Again, J.R. and what's his name? Where did he go? Jaden. Where did he go? Get him back in here. Ah, you are. You listen to this. Audrey, you listen to this. The devil is going to find a way in your future to put you in bondage. All of us adults say amen to that. Because he found a way, didn't he? But once God makes you free from that bondage, you don't ever want to go back to it. So when God sets you free and makes you free, stand fast. That means don't go back to the same old stuff that you used to do. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you whosoever you are 
justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Again, forget about what you heard John Calvin say. Forget about what you heard Jacob Arminius said. Focus on what the Bible said. Ye are fallen from grace. I don't ever want to go back to the things that I used to be, the man that I used to be, the type of person I used to be. I never, ever, ever want to be that man ever again. Ever. Philippians 1.25, have this confidence, and having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel and in nothing be terrified by your adversaries which is to them an evident token of perdition but to you of salvation and that of God. Now here's what I like in a church. A church that's not fighting over every piddly little thing. Amen? You know what that gives us the ability to do? Feed 1,200 people this week in Turkana, Kenya. One lady that we met had been starving for four days. She had been praying that God would bring her food. And a motorcycle came up to her little hut and dropped off this bag of food for her. And she, they recorded her on video thanking our church and the hand that delivered that food for saving her life. See, if the death, I'm a fully aware of this. I've been part of this church since I was, since I was this tall. That was when I was eight. <laughs> I'm like Jaden. Um... I've seen people fight over the silliest things ever. And there's just something in me as pastor that says, we don't need this. We don't need this. If you're all in agreement, let's try to feed 1,200 more in another two weeks. If that's okay with everybody. Let's try to feed 1,200 more. Let's try to keep both those radio stations pumping out the gospel. Now that we got rid of the guy that was stealing all the money from us and try, almost stole our radio stations from us. Now that we got rid of him, let's focus on feeding them with the gospel of Jesus Christ so that they can hear it in their language. And let's focus on feeding their bodies because then they know that they can trust us because we're the ones helping them while the Catholic Church sits on all that money, all that gold, and doesn't do anything for them out there. They know who's helping them. They know who's feeding them. And they know who to, what radio station to listen to when it's time to hear the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what that means. He said that, um, verse 27, only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Now he didn't mean striving against each other, he meant we are all working in this thing together to make sure the gospel gets preached to not just the Kenyans, 
but to people all over the world who are hearing us, to this lady that lost her husband, that counts on the DVDs going out every month because she don't know how to turn on a computer. She doesn't have a smart telephone. She doesn't have anything like that. She couldn't get on the internet to save her life. So we send the DVD, D, DVDs out still because she knows how to pop that in her, in her TV and at least listen to the messages and the sermons that we put out here. She's going to need that now that her husband is gone. She's going to need that now more than ever. And if the devil got us all hating one another, fighting one another, what would that do to the gospel that's going out of that place? It would shut it off very quickly. I can guarantee you it would be. Philippians 4.1, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and my crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. 1 Thessalonians 3, 6, But now when Timotheus came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and that you have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you, therefore, brethren, we are comforted over you in all our affliction and distresses by your faith. For now we live if ye stand fast in the Lord. He put an if in there, didn't he? That means those who will continue living will do so if they stand fast in the Lord. And from a little boy, I watched adults, men and women, that I thought were the great saints of the Lord fall out, run out after other sins, get drunk, shack up with other women, other men. I saw that over time. And I thought, that ain't right. They didn't stand fast in the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. That means, and I'm looking at the camera, so you know I'm going to be talking to all the internet people. That means if you can't prove it in the Bible, don't believe it. Don't believe it. If you can't prove all your conspiracy theories, all your uh, right-wing conspiracies, I won't mention them, but if you can't prove them with scripture, let it go. What God's going to do, he's going to do according to every word in this book. Do y'all believe that? Surely the Lord doeth nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. And it's all laid out right here. Even Jesus said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. When Jesus said, When I come, I'm going to do it by the book. And I'm not going to fail. Father, bless your word. Bless these that hear it. Bless these, Father Lord, that maybe it bothered them a little bit. But Father, if nothing else, Help us, dear God, to stand fast in your word, in the faith, in the things, God, that you have shown us from your word. Help us, dear God, to stand fast in those things and never, ever let them go. So that no man take our crown at the end. Bless your word, we pray in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, Amen.